And welcome to High School Physics Explain, and this is a quick answer to a past question from the HSC 2004, question number 19. And this particular one is all about Kepler's third law and also about what we need to do to launch a rocket into space. So let's go through the question. So the question says a Mars rover called the Spirit was launched on a satellite from Earth when the planets were in positions as shown. The satellites arrived in Mars. And the first thing we need to do is to indicate the approximate positions of Earth and Mars on the 3rd of December 2003. The first thing we need to recognize is that the launch date and the arrival date are about six months apart. So we're going to assume that the rotation of the planets around the sun is in a counterclockwise direction. And so the first thing you need to realize is that the Earth's position is going to be 180 degrees on the other side. So that's where it is over here. Mars is going to be not 180 degrees. It's going to be less than that. And generally speaking, anywhere from about here to about here would be OK for a correct answer. And why is that? Well, again, it's all about Kepler's third law. That is, as r cubed over t squared is a constant, then that means that it's going to take a longer time. So it's not exactly a sort of half the time, so it's not going to be a quarter. So certainly you don't want it in a position over here, which is about a quarter of the time. You certainly don't want it over here, which is uh, about um, exactly the same amount of time. So it's going to be somewhere in this range over here. So if you did the answer over here, then that would be fine. And that's begin because of Kepler's third law. Now it says, it says, also the trajectory to Mars. So you need to understand, you just need to not only know the positions of the planet six months later, but how you might actually launch something. Now it's not going to go straight across like that, nor is it going to go straight down like this. It's probably going to be launched from the edge of the Earth along here, and then it's going to follow a path like this as it uses the gravitational field of mass to pull it in. So a curve like this is what you're needing for the trajectory. So that gives you the three marks. One mark for the position of Earth, one mark for the correct position of Mars in this range over here, and the trajectory. The second part of the question says is discuss the effect of Earth's motion on the launch and the trajectory of two Mars of this satellite. So in order to get three marks, you need to do a number of things. First of all, you're obviously going to launch it because the Earth is going to go in that direction. You're going to launch it in that direction. That automatically means that you've got a speed boost that you need to recognize. So number one, you've got a speed boost simply because you're move launching it from the same direction that the Earth is moving around the sun. Secondly, you've got a, another speed boost. But in this case, it's not about the Earth's motion around the sun, but actually its rotation as well. So all of both of those are going to combine in terms of giving the satellite the speed boost. So that's the effect that you're having on Earth's motion. So there's two parts of Earth's motion, the motion of the Earth around the sun and the motion rotating around an axis. But then you've got also on the launch and the trajectory, the effect of Earth's motion on the trajectory. So what is going to happen, of course, is this satellite is being slung out this way. But as the Earth moves and as Mars moves, you're going to get this curve because of the gravitational field that both Earth and Mars exert uh, various aspects of the journey to cause this trajectory to turn. So you need to talk about the gravity effect of the Earth and the planet Mars on turning or curving that trajectory. And that, in essence, is the answer for part B. Hope that helps helped you. Bye for now.